I'm Dr. Joan Parambi. I'm both certified in internal medicine and endocrinology and diabetes and metabolism. I work full-time at Doctors Community Hospital at our Riverdale office. Diabetes is a condition where your blood glucose level or your sugar levels are elevated and this um, in the long run or immediately can result in complications. The main difference between type 1 and type 2 has to do with insulin production. In type 1 diabetes, there is a deficiency of insulin where the patient is not producing insulin. And in type 2, they're producing insulin, but it's a processing issue. Diabetes can happen in anyone. Uh, type 1 diabetes happens more in people who have a family history of the disease or who have certain other types of autoimmune diseases. Type 2 diabetes, once again, happens more frequently in people who have a family history of type 2 diabetes. It also happens in people who have risk factors for type 2 diabetes, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, lack of activity. Uh, Pre-diabetes is a very common condition. Uh, it is where your blood sugars are elevated, but they're not high enough to be uh, in the diabetic range. Uh, but 70% of patients who have pre-diabetes eventually progress to diabetes. So it's a very important condition to recognize and treat. The symptoms of pre-diabetes are not as pronounced as diabetes, but there are certain subtle signs. Um, uh, the main driver of pre-diabetes is insulin resistance. So when you have um, elevated insulin levels that can result in something called acanthosis nigricans. It's when you get darkening of the folds of your skin, especially behind the neck, under the armpits. Um, the other thing that's associated with insulin resistance and pre-diabetes is rapid weight gain. Uh, you uh, notice a lot of people gain weight rapidly, easily, so that can also be a subtle sign of pre-diabetes. Uh, endocrinology is a subspecialty of internal medicine. We are physicians who have had additional fellowship training and board certification in uh, diagnosing and treating endocrine or hormone imbalances. Uh, common endocrinology um, diseases that we treat in endocrinology are diabetes, osteoporosis, thyroid, adrenal, pituitary. It is complicated. Um, it's, uh, there's two factors. Uh, there's a combination of the genetics that we inherit, and then there are certain environmental um, triggers that trigger the disease. So type one diabetes, uh, there's definitely a genetic component, but especially in identical twins, just because one twin, uh, twin has it, it's about a 50% chance that the other twin will have it. And the same thing with type two, if one um, twin has it, there's a, a three to 4% increased risk. So definitely there is a genetic component, but just because you have the genes, you don't have to get the disease. There are certain uh, modifications that you can do to avoid it. We do. We have a free walk-in class uh, the third Monday of every month and it's at the Jocelyn Education Center on campus, on the main campus. As far as the disease itself is concerned, in my practice, one thing I see very commonly is people think that one type of diabetes is worse than the other type, or they think type 1 is worse than type 2. And at least in this century, with the technological advancements we have, that's not necessarily true. Type 1 diabetes can be very effectively managed with the correct tools and technology. I'm actually more worried about patients who have type 2 diabetes because they have other risk factors, things like high blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity, which can result in more complications.
diabetes there are certain factors uh, that we can't change like genes uh, age our past behaviors but there's definitely things that we can modify to treat it and then delay the onset if you have pre-diabetes It's a multifaceted approach. Uh, I like to think of it as the patient in the center and then everyone surrounding and um, helping the patient. So it starts off with the patient uh, being emotionally ready to make the lifestyle change, because more often than not, it is a drastic change. And then uh, the patient is then surrounded by um, doctors who can provide the right type of medicine to help them reach their goals. Then there's the nutritionists and the dietitians that help them reach their nutrition goals. Then uh, there's therapists, physical therapists, instructors that help them with their weight loss goals. And there's usually um, ther behavioral therapists or psychiatrists because this is a chronic condition and um, some patients do need that extra counseling to help manage a chronic disease. There's a lot of things that we can do every in our everyday lives uh, that can uh, prevent it or delay the onset. Uh, the main thing is if you are overweight or obese, work on um, weight loss, exercise, diet, preferably a low carbohydrate, plant-based diets have shown uh, to be of exceptional benefits in di uh, if you have diabetes. Lack of stress or reduce your stress with exercise meditation. Lack of sleep, uh, never underestimate the importance of sleep, it's that, that is very important. And uh, exercise, if you can exercise at least 150 to 180 minutes a week, you don't have to do anything strenuous. If you can, great, but if you can commit to that and eventually all that results in weight loss, those are all major things that you can do. Diabetes can cause immediate problems. That's when your blood sugars are very high. It can result in blurring of vision, uh, increased risk for urinary tract infections, yeast infections, delayed wound healing. Uh, in the long run, it can result in long-term complications where kidney is affected. Eventually, you result in dialysis. Um, eyes are affected, blindness, nerve damage results in amputation, and then there's a role of diabetes in um, cardiovascular diseases like heart attack strokes. It is important to monitor your blood sugar, um, glucose, blood glucose levels. Um, the frequency depends on what kind of regimen you are um, on. If you're on diet control and on pills, most, uh, most of the time I recommend that you check your sugars before breakfast and at bedtime about two to three times a week. That gives you an idea of your trend, what your blood sugars are doing when you're fasting and what your blood sugars are doing after you eat. Now, uh, if patients are on insulin, depending on their insulin regimen, depending on their complications, um, patients need to check their sugars anywhere from two to six times a day. Uh, the good news is with the, again, ad the advance in technology, we have continuous glucose monitoring devices like sensors like the Dexcom or the Freestyle Libre, which reduces the number of times we need to prick our fingers. It continuously monitors your blood sugars. Because this is a chronic disease, uh, a lot of it starts with education. So we have our Jocelyn Education Center that goes, uh, that gives you diabetes education as well as the nutrition classes. And then we have our endo uh, endocrinology outpatient practice. We have a practice in Riverdale and we have a practice in Laurel.